Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So guys, before moving on to our first question, let me inform you that you can get the PDF of this session on the Telegram channel and the link of that channel is in description below. On that note, let's move on to our first question. Which state UT has launched the Shramik Mitra scheme to ensure that the benefits of the government scheme reach the construction focus? So Uttarakhand, Delhi, Jammu, Kashmir, Ladakh, Punjab are in the options out of which Delhi is the right answer. So the government of Delhi has launched this Shramik Mitra scheme under which the volunteers will be known, who, which will be known as the Shramik Mitras will go to the doorstep of the construction workers to inform them about the government schemes as well as help them in, in enrolling in those schemes. So this is the basic purpose of launching this Shramik Mitra scheme. Shramik is laborer, Mitra is friend. Okay, so the volunteer will act as the friend of the construction workers and help them in enrolling in these schemes. Now you are seeing certain numbers here, 800 Shramik Mitras, three to four Shramik Mitras for every ward. Now here, you don't have to memorize these numbers because guys here, we need to understand that it is a national level examination. RBS and Nabar are not any kind of state examinations. Therefore, you can skip these minute figures, the facts, uh, whenever we are covering any kind of state scheme. Okay, but the basic purpose and the target group should not be forgotten by you. Okay. Give me a second, guys. Okay. So here we are at our second question. Which of the following initiative has been launched at the COP26 of UNFCCC to gauge the value of climate resilience in quantitative terms globally for policymakers and investors? Okay. So first of all, let me give you the background of this question because otherwise you won't be able to understand the question itself. So what has happened? is that at the COP26 of United Nations Framework Conference on Climate Change, Framework Convention on Climate Change, basically the, uh, this initiative has been launched, which is named as Global Climate Resilience Index Initiative. Okay, so the basic purpose of this Global Resilience Index Initiative is to gauge, that is to assess the impact of climate resilience as well as the cost of doing nothing. So basically, as we can see from the name itself, Global Resilience Index. So what this index will measure, this index will measure the resilience of different locations of different geographies, countries, etc. in relation to climate change. That is the basic purpose. And by doing that, by doing the assessment, they will provide the data to the policymakers as well as to the investors. Policymakers will use that data in making policies that will prioritize the climate change. Okay, the resilient, uh, the resilient missions and initiatives for mitigating the impact of climate change. Whereas investors will use their funding, will mobilize their funding in such a manner that they can fund the climate friendly projects as well as their existing projects. They can also reduce the damage done to their existing projects. However, the basic and the priority agenda is to mitigate the impact of climate change by building resilience. And how are they going to do it via this initiative? They are basically providing the data. So basically, this is nothing but a repository of resilience against the climate change. How the countries are performing, how the companies are performing in order to mitigate the impact of climate change, that data will be provided on this Global Resilience Index Initiative. Okay, so that is the basic purpose. Now let's go into the details of this initiative. Okay, so first of all, understand that a global coalition of 10 organizations, which include United Nations organization as well, the parts of United Nations organization. So a lot of organizations are there. As you can see, the number is 10. So you don't have to memorize each and every organization. So they have launched this Global Resilience Index Initiative at the COP26, okay? The purpose of this initiative is to assess the resilience of countries against climate risk. 
that i have already told you now this uh, this initiative will act as will basically act as a repository of information the repository of data okay in relation to climate resilience and that information will be provided to different sectors of the global economy and the data will assess will affirm the need and value of building climate resilience and the cost of doing nothing okay so basically this initiative will encourage the people to invest in climate resilience because otherwise if the companies and the government both the sectors the private and the public sector both have to invest in the climate resilience sector otherwise the cost of doing nothing would be very very huge beyond the human capacity to rehabilitate okay so that is also something that will be provided by this initiative next thing that we need to understand about this initiative is the benefit so what kind of benefit will this initiative be provide okay so this will create a universal model for assessing the disaster vulnerability this in turn will help the policy makers in prioritizing the climate policies and investors in investing their money in climate project and others for getting optimal output oh, however when we are saying climate projects the focus is on uh, mobilizing the private funding towards climate resilient projects now the basic benefit that we will derive from this initiative is that it will reduce the gap in direct investment and aid where they are needed the most okay so if we have the data of the entire globe if we have the data on how uh, how many countries and to what extent the countries are exposed to the climate risk obviously we will provide investment there we will invest and aid provide aid at the point where they need the most okay what are the components corporate climate risk dis disclosure as i told you that the focus is both on public and private national adaptation planning and reporting planning of pre arranged humanitarian finance okay so this initiative aims to provide corporate climate risk disclosure of that in which place in which country the companies will have to face more and more climate related disasters and how can they mitigate those disasters so that is one thing that will be provided by this information portal we can say or the tool next is national adaptation planning and reporting this is easy to understand this point states that if we have the data that these countries are vulnerable to weather changes these countries are vulnerable to climate change and here and here you can face certain disasters obviously we can pre plan the help we can pre plan the mitigation and rehabilitation efforts so that will also be done by this initiative next is the partners and supporters of this initiative so clearly we have two most important coalitions that are supporting this initiative one is leading by one is led by india coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure and the other is coalition for climate resilient investment so here this initiative ends i hope that you have understood the basic purpose that is to create a repository a create a database on uh, the climate change as well as the vulnerability the climate risk and how the resilient infrastructure and resilience built against the climate change against the disasters can help in uh, in protecting the earth as well as the wealth of the people as well okay which state has received rupees 770 crore loan from the world bank to improve river transportation in the state so here the right answer is assam assam has received this loan from the world bank and clearly the purpose is to improve the river transportation next question is which of the following is not a parameter as not a performance assessment parameter of the monthly delta rankings of the niti ayog so here we have health and nutrition education agriculture water resources sanitation etc so the right answer here is option e sanitation is not a parameter 
Now, what are the delta rankings? Basically, delta rankings are the monthly rankings released by the Niti Aayog in order to assess the performance, the improvement in certain indicators at the level of aspirational districts. Okay, so this is basically a ranking of aspirational districts on the basis of their improvement on certain parameters. And what are these certain parameters? These are health and nutrition. education, agriculture and water resources, financial inclusion, skill development and basic infrastructure. So these are the parameters of this index. Now guys, every month this delta ranking is released by Niti Aayog. Therefore, the month preceding to your examination, the latest ranking is important. However, we do not know when your exam notification will come out as well as when this next delta ranking will come out because this is also not very regular in its release okay therefore we will cover the latest rankings that have been released for the month of september 2021 so here first of all understand that we have these many sectors and out of these sectors the focus is education in this month's ranking so in education bhopal palli in telangana has topped so this district has topped in the education sector particularly and in overall rankings, Ranchi has stopped. Then you have Chhatra from Jharkhand, Baramula from Jammu and Kashmir. This is important, guys. A district from Jammu and Kashmir is ranking in the top five, is at the top third position in the delta rankings of the aspirational districts. This is important. Do remember. Vayanar, Kerala, Kerala and Shravasti in Uttar Pradesh. So these are the top five. Now, when was this aspirational district the, uh, scheme launched by the government of India? It was in 2018. How many aspirational districts are covered under this scheme? This is your question that you will answer in the comment section with me. Which of the following hackathons has been launched by the Reserve Bank of India? So here, you have Smart India Hackathon, UPI Hackathon, Harbinger Hackathon, DigiPay, Secured, Cyber. These are in the options out of which Harbinger Hackathon is the right answer. Okay. Now, this hackathon has been launched in order to first of all understand that this is the global level hackathon. So, it means that participants from across the globe are invited in this hackathon and the basic purpose is to develop technology develop solutions so that digital payments can be made easy and accessible to the underserved people ease of payments can be enhanced and user experience can be enhanced digital payment security can be strengthened and customer protection can also be achieved and uh, promoted okay so the participants will also resolve several problems uh, related to payment and settlement systems in India. Okay, so that is the whole crux of this Harbinger Hackathon. Recently, Union Minister of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare, Shri Narendra Singh Tomar, has inaugurated the Kisan Bhavan and Beekeeper Conference at the Central Institute of Horticulture. In which state is this Central Institute of Horticulture located? So here the right answer is Nagaland. Now understand this thing that the Central Institute of Horticulture was established by the central government, the, by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare. And as far as this news is concerned, this much is enough for your exam preparation. Now we have certain updates on the honey mission as well that we need to pay attention to. So the very first thing is that so far the government of India has spent approximately or in absolute terms because this was written in absolute terms rupees 500 crores so that is the amount that has already been spent on the honey mission and the result of this expenditure is also evident as the production of honey has increased to 1.25 lakh metric tons in 2020 to 2021 from 76,000 uh, 76, metric tons in 2013 to 14. Also, the export of honey has also increased in the 
2020 to 2021 years to 60,000 metric tons from just 28,000 metric tons seven years ago. So this achievement is the result of uh, is basically has been achieved in the seven year period. So that is also we need to consider. So guys, that is all for today. I hope that you have enjoyed the session. And if you have, then do not forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you so much for watching it.